In today's video, we are going to be jailbreaking iOS 7. Now, we are going to be using macOS for this method. The program that we're using is Pangu, and that also works on Windows, but in today's video, we will be doing everything on a Mac, and as long as you have macOS Mojave 10.14 or newer, you're good to go, because this will work on newer, more modern versions of macOS. Now, you also need to have iOS 7.1, 7.1.1, or 7.1.2 because that is what this program is made for. Earlier versions of iOS 7 won't work, but you're most likely going to have 7.1.2. And this also works on any device that runs on iOS 7 that is on one of those versions except for the Apple TV. I should also mention that there are jailbreaks available for earlier versions of iOS 7, but this video is specifically for 7.1 or newer. Pengu can be found on the iPhone Wiki website, and I will have it linked in the description down below. We are going to head over to the download section and download version 1.2.0 for Mac OS. Now, once it's downloaded, we need to open it up. And then once this pops up, we need to simply drag it and put it into the applications folder. Now this next step is important because we do not want to open up Pengu from the applications folder. Rather, we want to open it up directly from the terminal. So once we have the terminal open, you need to type in sudo space dash b space forward slash applications forward slash pengu.app forward slash contents forward slash macOS forward slash pengu and then simply press enter. It's going to ask you for your computer password. And then once you type it in, it'll open up. Now the next step is to get the device ready for the jailbreak process. Now we have to get our device ready. For today's video, I have an iPhone 4 here and this is running 7.1.2. I have this at the setup screen, but it's already set up. So we can go ahead and get started. And if you want to double check and make sure that your iDevice is running the correct version of iOS, go into general about and right down here it'll say the version so we are on version 7.1.2 and of course this is a fresh install so there is nothing on it now that we have verified that our device is on the correct iOS version be sure to back up your device just in case something happens if you do have something that you want to make sure is saved otherwise we can go ahead and continue the first thing we have to do before we plug it into the computer is go into settings go into general and then go down to date and time. Now what we have to do is change the date and time to June 1st of 2014. Probably one of the easiest ways to do it is by just doing this a lot and then eventually you'll get to June 1st of 2014. Now the reason why we're doing this is because the certificates on the software won't work on a newer date. So we went to 2012, we'll have to go a little bit above, but this makes sure that the device and software will actually jailbreak. And just like that, we are now on June 1st of 2014. You also wanna make sure to turn off your passcode. You can always re-enable this afterwards, but you wanna make sure that this is off during the jailbreak process, otherwise it can cause problems. So now that we have the date and time set correctly, again, because of the certificates with Pangu, we can then go ahead and plug the device into the computer. And again, if you haven't backed up your data, be sure to do that. And if you have a message saying to trust this computer, then be sure to click trust. So that way you can access the device. And the device has now been detected in Pangu. All we have to do is click on jailbreak. Now this will take a while. Eventually we will have a Pangu app just like that. But you wanna go ahead and wait and make sure that the program is telling you when to click on it. So then we go ahead and click on this. Click on continue on the pop-up. And then again, make sure to not touch anything. And now we have to unlock the device. The device should reboot by itself. So we do have to wait a little bit more. This message will pop up. All you have to do is click on done. And after the device reboots again, we are done with the jailbreak. Congratulations, your iOS 7 device is now jailbroken. 
we have Cydia. Now at this point, we can go ahead and change the date and time if it hasn't done so automatically. In this case, it has. And in Pengu itself, it says that the device is already jailbroken. So we can go ahead and close Pengu. And now we can do whatever we want with our jailbroken device. So with this, you have Cydia. And the first time that you open this, you'll have a preparing file system message. Now you wanna make sure that this completes because this is a first time setup process. It will take longer depending on what device you're using. In this case, the iPhone 4 is taking more time than something like an iPhone 5 or 5S would. You just have to wait for it to complete. It will say storage almost full. This is completely normal, so you just click on done. And then we can go ahead and open up Cydia, wait for it to load, and then it will give you a update prompt. Now I always go for the complete upgrade. And with that, we are done. Now we're able to use Cydia. So we're able to add sources, or we can just search for different tweaks and applications. And jailbreaking helps you basically bring new life into the device. And it's a very useful tool, especially for these older devices that are getting quite old nowadays. One more thing, whenever you open up Cydia after it's been fully updated or even before, you might get an error message saying that a particular repo was not found or it just had a problem loading. which is this specific repo, the Ultra Snow repo that is built into Cydia. Well, this URL doesn't work anymore, so you can actually just click on edit and then remove the repo because you won't actually need it. And every time you open up Cydia, it'll keep bringing up that error message. So you can just go ahead and click on delete and then it won't cause you any more problems. And in fact, if we click on refresh, the error message will be gone. So no more error message. And we can even go ahead and restart Cydia. And it will not give us the error message anymore. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. If you found this helpful and you wanna see more videos like this, then consider subscribing because it helps out the channel and you'll get more videos like this in the future. But for now, thanks for watching.